reveal your ingredients. Now you all have one main ingredient. That main ingredient is the humble squid. The box also includes crab, chorizo, courgette flowers, asparagus, tomatoes, chili, saffron, rice and potatoes. We're not aiming for the stars at this stage, but something edible would be good. 50 minutes, one dish, let's cook. Our contestants are being given an uncleaned whole squid. They're going to have to take that outside membrane off, remove the inside of it, take the quill from it and clean it. Unless you've actually cleaned a squid before, it's a bit of a tough one. I love squid. Here's hoping we get something delicious from at least one of them. Mercury Prize winning rapper Speech DeBell was taught to cook by her Jamaican grandmother. I'm pretty inventive as a cook. Um, you know, I like to come up with different recipes, uh, especially that sort of combine my Caribbean background with my British background. I like to mix those two things. All right, Speech, you much of a cook? I am. I, I do enjoy cooking. Um, two, maybe three times a week. I'm into food. Um, it's one of my passions in life. It, it goes alongside music for me. Tell us what you're going to cook for us. The squid and the chorizo in, like, a tomato sauce, a little bit of a um, little bit of the chilli in there. I've, I've done squid before for my mates. Did some calamari. Mm. We had calamari and wine. How, how far do you think you can go in this competition? Um, I, my goal is to at least be a finalist. Hey, I like a bit of ambition. <laughs> it might be all right. She's handled squid before. She's made calamari with her friends. It doesn't look like anything's going to phase her. Only time will tell. You have had 20 minutes. That means you've got 30 minutes left. Looks like the dangers of the kitchen are worse than the dangers <laughs> of the ring, Joe. Yeah, it looks like it. Undefeated world champion boxer Joe Calzaghi's love of Italian food comes from his family roots. My grandfather was a cook in Sardinia, and um, my, my dad, my, my dad's two brothers, and my mum, they were all really good cooks. It's the time I started to learn how to cook. Good to meet you, Joe. Nice to meet you. Your first five minutes of MasterChef, and you're bleeding more than you did in ten years' illustrious career in the ring. That's right, yeah. I think it must be the nerves, you know. I'm trying to slice up the squid and accidentally slice through my finger, so... Somebody's got to do it. You look like you're well on the way. What are you going to cook for us? I'm just uh, going to do some calamari, hopefully, and um, just a bit of a, a, a side salad with onions and tomatoes. Joe, um, tell me how much cooking you really do. Not much at all. You know, I make um, pasta sauce for my, for my boys. I figure this will try to motivate me to, to learn and improve my culinary skills and hopefully go on and, and start cooking. Joe, honestly, if it makes you feel any better, just take a jab at John. I will do and the thing that gets better, OK. By the looks of the coating on the outside of the squid, it should be crispy and it should be really beautiful. It's what goes with the squid. A tomato and onion salad. If he's going out first, John, you are sacking him because that man has a fearsome reputation. Thirty minutes gone. You've got twenty minutes left. TV presenter and entertainer Les Dennis enjoys cooking for his young family. The one thing I want from this show is for Greg to taste something. It doesn't matter what it is, and go. That is lovely. That's all I want. Good to meet you, Les. How are you feeling? This is probably the most out of my um, comfort zone I've felt. Do you have any idea at all what you're going to cook for us? I'm pan-frying the squid in a little bit of lemon, uh, and I'm going to do it with a, a beurre blanc that looks like it might have um, browned off, but... A, a beurre blanc? A beurre blanc. You're going to make... Les, you do a lot of cooking, obviously. 
I, I just um, learned that Beur Blanc recently and thought, well, if I get a chance to do it, I'll do it. Where the Beur Blanc sits with tomatoes, potatoes, squid, I'm not quite sure. Nor is this. You've got just 15 minutes. England cricketer Matthew Hoggard was part of the 2005 Ashes winning team. Somebody asked me what, what your favourite food is, and I said, what day is it? Because I have such a wide variety of tastes that one day it'll be meat and two veg or a Sunday roast, the next it'll be an Indian or a Chinese or a Thai. I like all food and lots of it. Matthew, you actually look like you might know what you're doing. Looks can be fooling and deceiving. I'm just planging things on and hopefully it'll turn out all right. Uh, tell us what you've got going on in that pan. Looks like a little risotto. I've got a little bit of risotto going on. I'm going to put some squid in it and mix my crab into it to get it nice and flavoursome. What's the deal? How much cooking do you do? I tend to do quite a bit at home. But again, you normally do things that are easy when you, when you haven't got that time. I'd love to have the time to go to the market and everything else to get the ingredients to, to cook every day. But you don't have the time. So you tend to stick with what you know instead of going out and challenging yourself and doing new things, which is what I want to do in this programme. I'm looking forward to this. I'm glad you are. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. The addition of cream, really, squid and cream with rice. It's not a rice pudding, Matthew. You've got five minutes left. Finish up, you've got one minute. That's it, stop. Your time's up. First up is Les, who's made squid in a Beurre Blanc sauce with sauté potatoes, asparagus, and a tomato and basil salsa. Nice asparagus in a Beurre Blanc, nice tomato salsa, decent texture on your squid, nice fried potato. In a nutshell, Les, there are lots of things on this dish that are nice to eat, but they don't match each other. <laughs> right. It doesn't work together, but I could probably choose bits from it and enjoy a lunch. Thank you. Thank you. I've been at the Palladium, I've done Royal Varieties, on my own standing up, telling jokes, but that experience is probably the most nervous I've ever been. Matthew has made squid, crab and chorizo paella with buttered asparagus. I have no idea what's in the middle of that mound, and it frights me a little bit. Well, let me help you. There you go. Yeah, so now you can see. The rice is fine, the chorizo paprika flavour is, is lovely throughout there. The squid is slightly overcooked, it's going a little rubbery. The big problem there is the addition of cream. Cream coating squid. Cream coating chorizo, which isn't great. Okay. I love the fragrance of the lemon and the parsley with the chilli. I think your rice is cooked really well. You made a bit of a mistake with the cream. But I really like your confidence, I really do. Your mind goes blank and you're thinking, right, then I've got all these ingredients, what should I do, where should I start? So I'm a little bit beating myself up, but I'm glad that I've done the first challenge. Joe has cooked calamari with garlic potatoes and a tomato and onion salad. I like the flavour on your potatoes of garlic and lemon. I, I like the freshness of tomato and uh, onion. I love your calamari. Love your calamari. But the whole thing looks messy, 
bit of a fry before you start chopping up loads of tomatoes and frying loads of potatoes. Think what it is you'd really like to see yeah. served with your calamari. Yeah. Joe, I like your crunchy, crispy batter on the outside of your squid, and some of it is actually really nice. As for the rest of it, it's all a bit hacked away, sort of like your fingers. I think what happened was as soon as you cut yourself, you lost your confidence and uh, things started to run away with you. I want you to get your confidence back because I think you can cook a bit. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Obviously, I was uh, very nervous when I walked in. I think I sort of panicked a little bit, and uh, hopefully I try not to cut my finger in the next round, so... Speech has made a squid, chorizo and tomato stew, served over garlic potatoes. You're the only person in the room to take that outside membrane off your squid. I think it looks proper handsome. All right. The flavours in there are really impressive. You've got sweet tomato, you've got a little bit of garlic. The chorizo is spilling that paprika flavour and making it really warm. The squid's cooked, the chorizo's cooked, the potatoes are soft. That is one of the most impressive uh, mystery box rounds I I've seen. Thank you. You are very impressive. Uh, thank you. This is brilliant. It's comforting, it's interesting, it's exciting, it looks beautiful. You're rocking. You are rocking. I, I quite enjoyed it. I kind of got into a bit of a relaxed state um, and tried to imagine I was just at home. Yeah. Gentlemen, I think you're going to have to really fight hard for this one. And if you thought this was hard, ha, wait for the next one. Thanks very much. Off you go. Skin, Respect, man. Today started with a, a huge amount of nerves. Poor Joe was so nervous, he cut two of his fingers off and he lost his way. His dish sort of reflected it. I think speech is amazing. I just hope she can keep it up. I mean, that array of textures and flavours in a bowl with a mystery box, John, is brilliant. Speech was the only one to clean the squid properly, take the membrane off, and the dish was delicious. Les had something in the bank. He knew how to make beurre blanc. Actually, not too bad. He started without a plan, but there's hope. Matthew was going to make a risotto-type paella thing, and that's exactly what he did. The big problem for Matthew was adding cream to that rice made the whole thing sticky. Three competent cooks and one who looks like she may be a serious contender. But we know anything can happen. This is the palate test. I'm going to cook a dish. We're going to give the dish to our celebrities, ask them to taste it and write down what ingredients they think make the dish up. The dish is fig and cardamom tart tatin with a pistachio and caramel crunch and orange and rose water cream with pistachio praline. It's a good palate test because there aren't that many ingredients. John starts with the filling for the tart. On the heat, a couple of cardamom pods into each one just to flavour the sugar. The sugar is starting to caramelise very, very quickly. That's lovely. That is lovely. You see this one here, and it's almost burnt. You see it, so the smoke is coming out. That, that's how, uh, how far you've got to go. Let that cool down a bit. And now our figs go into the tart itself. And do the same with the second one. Next, John prepares the pastry. The tops, of course, must be bigger than the pan, because if the tops aren't big enough, then you won't be able to tuck them in. It's about encasing all the filling inside the tart. Figs are cold, not hot. Really important. Because if the, the figs are hot, then the pastry will start to melt. Then it doesn't actually cook properly, and then you end up with that raw pastry that tastes like cheese. Now, they go into an oven at 220 for about 18 to 20 minutes. 
whilst the tart's in the oven, I'm going to make the praline. Lots of sugar, tiny amount of water, and then put it on the stove. Whilst the caramel cooks, toast the nuts. You make the caramel and then you add the nuts to it. It won't work if you put the nuts in the sugar while it's cooking? No, because there's oil in the nuts and that means that the sugar will crystallise. You see that caramel now, you can smell it. It's almost burnt. Yeah, there's a bitterness to it. Yeah. Now that's when you add your nuts. And that's the praline. And then pour your praline out onto a tray. Let that cool. And we're going to make a flavoured cream. Just grate a little bit of orange rind, not the zest. And then vanilla, rose water, the orange flower water. And now to whip the cream. That's getting thicker. Yeah. Add some cream to that first. Spool it around. Now, what haven't I put in there, Mr. Wallace? Sugar. That's right. Once the praline has cooled, John blitzes some to create the pistachio crunch. I'm going to take these tarts out. Let them just stop cooking for a second. Way! Take our praline. Mm. Fixed tart, sachet of praline, and orange and rose water cream. Very, very good. All flavours discernible, all skills there are achievable. Let's get them in, let's give them your dish. I'm looking forward to this. This is a palate test. In front of you, there is a dish that I've cooked for you. We would like you to taste that dish and write down on the piece of paper exactly what you think went to make up that dish. It's pud time. I know that green thing, but I can't think of the name of it. This is that called a capsicum or something? That's quite zesty with orange and obviously pistachio. Expert. <laughs> I've got a couple of things. What, there's something really strong in there, I'm not sure what it is. It's kind of like an aniseedy flavour. That's got quite a distinctive flavour. I'd love to tell you what that flavour was. I could try it again a million times, but I think I've recognised the ones that I'm going to recognise. Now you've tasted the dish, we're going to ask you to cook it. Underneath that cloth on your bench are all the ingredients that John used to make that lovely pudding. But be careful, there's some there that he didn't use. We're now going to give you 45 minutes to make it. Off you go. The ingredients have been separated into three groups, those to make the tart, the cream and the praline. But with no recipe, they'll have to rely on their palate and skill. I've never done a dessert in my life, I haven't got a foggiest. Joe, as much as I like the guy, has no idea what to do or where to start. Mate, I ain't got a 
Matthew's always seemed like a cool character, but actually he looks shaky right now. I've not done a tap before. I don't know what on earth I'm doing. But he's approaching it in the right manner and trying to work it out. Well, Chef, you, would you like to tell me anything? No. 15 minutes are gone. That means you've got 30 minutes left. The hardest part is that just not being a recipe here. I think this is how you make the praline. I've cooked the tart before, but... Uh... Never think anything quite this complex. My concern is that what is presently going on around the outside of us is frightening me. Les has lined a small fry pan with puff pastry and has put it in the oven, and I think he's going to fill it with some figs. That ain't going to work. Uh oh. Not quite right, but uh, we'll see. I'm just not sure I'm doing it right. Speech is the only person who correctly has the pastry on top of the fruit in the oven. What can you do? <laughs> you just got to laugh when you're going to cry otherwise. You are halfway. right now is spooning cream into a squeezy bottle not into a piping bag but Matthew is piping like he's a pastry chef I'm not sure about the tart but the accompaniments are working our last 10 minutes get on my knees you can still save it and pray <laughs> It's, um, it's at the mercy of the oven now. Four minutes left, guys. You should be thinking about your plates. Thirty seconds left to finish up your dish. Guys, that's it. Time's up. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Bring your plates up. What we asked you to replicate was uh, fig tartar -ta or upside down fig tart flavoured with cardamom, served with praline, praline dust, and an orange and rose water scented cream. I can say this to you very openly. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Only one of you put the tart the right way up in the oven, and that was speech. Everybody else laid the fruit on top of the pastry, which is why you've had such problems with your pastry. Shall we start with you, Joe? Figs are nice and juicy, they're, they're, they're cooked. Uh, I like that, indeed. I also like the flavour you've got into your cream. You've put orange zest in there. You've even managed to make praline, so well done. Your biggest problem is the tart itself, where the pastry won't cook with the fruit on top of it. Yeah, OK. Joe, I'll tell you what, from where you were, where you were just standing staring at it, <laughs> hoping it was going to whisper to you out of there, to actually producing something. I mean, well done. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, man. Your cream's slightly over-whipped. The pastry is, is soggy because you've 
bake the pastry with the figs on top of it and the juice comes out of the figs and the pastry goes soggy. Considering the flap you're in, I'm impressed. Nice. I'm impressed. It was tough. Completely outside my comfort zone when it comes to the dessert side of things, so um, I'm happy to have uh, just got through that bit, to be honest. Your turn, Matthew. <laughs> quality of your, your piped cream. <laughs> Mate, that, that is impressive. Don't look any further. <laughs> Good piping. Cheers. <laughs> As for the rest of it. <laughs> yes. Wow. Dog's dinner. Yeah. Figs are nice. Pastry is a write-off. A complete write-off. And interesting that you've sweetened the nuts on here, but you haven't sweetened the cream. If you take a full mouthful with a honey soggy pastry and the cream, it's okay because it's so sweet. I like the praline a lot. I really don't like your tart. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I hate pastry. I'm not too fond of nuts. I'm not too fond of cream, and I don't eat a lot of dessert. So if you could pick a challenge that I wouldn't want to do, it be that one. Les, you're up next. You've put the pastry underneath the figs, not on top of the figs, so there's no way it's gonna rise. What I like, though, you have seasoned the cream and the nuts really well. Both really nice and sweet. There is some citrus zest going through the cream. This hints at a decent palate. Thank you. Your food looks a fright, but actually tastes really good. OK. You haven't got any caramel inside your tart, where the pastry is undercooked, but what you do have there's this wonderful richness of star anise and lots of cardamom, so it's really wonderful and spicy with those baked figs, which are soft and sweet. There was no star anise in my recipe at all, but I might even nick that idea, Les. <laughs> and you never thought I'd say that to you after what you're cooking for us, would you? No. I don't know whether I've shown them I've got good dessert skills. I think I've shown them that I can <laughs> pull something like a rabbit out of a hat at the last minute. Speech? Your tart is actually up the right way. It's been upside down, so we've got lovely caramel inside, cardamom. Your figs are cooked. Your cream has got flecks of orange running through it and bits of vanilla. Your praline looks great. I'm really pleased, Speech. I really like that praline, crunchy and crisp, with your pistachio nuts inside. Uh, your fig tart has got crispy outside, some sauce in the centre. I like the fragrance of your cream. I think you worked really well. You worked it all out. Um, not bad job at all, Speech. I like it. What really impresses me about your cooking here is that dust. John had made it from praline that he'd whizzed up. You didn't know that. But what you did to create the same thing is do the nuts, a little bit of lime zest, and the sugar. That's your palate working it out, and I find that really impressive. I was in at the deep end, and I, I kind of like that. I think I, I, I like being under pressure. Not a bad day. Not a bad day at all. Tomorrow is a new day, and it's just going to get tougher. <laughs> Thanks very much. Off you go. Thank you. An interesting day, lots of ups and downs. I tell you what I am impressed with, and that, that is speech. That lady looks like she's got real talent coming from her fingertips, John. She's a cook. Very good mystery box, good palate, and at the same time able to cook and recreate that dish pretty well indeed. She's made a proper mark, hasn't she? Absolutely. That may, that's a really good start from her. Let's see if she can keep it going. I think I've impressed John and Greg. I've got to try and keep them impressed. 
Matthew, I think, is a decent cook. I think Matthew had a decent squid test. Uh, you could see the way he piped the cream that he cooks. I think desserts, though, is Matthew's Achilles heel. I haven't bathed myself in glory, but I haven't sunk to the bottom of the ocean. So, middle of the road, a lot of improvement can still be made. But I'm up for the challenge, I'm up for the hard work, and hopefully I can progress further. I still don't think that Joe has recovered from cutting his fingers. Joe may not be a cook, but he's got a great spirit because Joe didn't have a clue and still managed to get a dish up. Didn't really come my way today, but hopefully I'll, I'll uh, be able to improve and uh, get more confident, fingers crossed, and go from there. Les may not have the technical knowledge, but I think Les has got a good palate. There's things that he does I really like. I like the fact that he put lots of star anise and cardamom in with the caramel. Clever. Really clever. I find it difficult to go off piste the way we had to both in both um, challenges today. But um, by having said that, I enjoyed it. It's scary, but it's fun. It's been a fascinating day. Tomorrow is going to be something completely different. We're going to send these four to cook for the general public. After surviving the MasterChef kitchen, the celebrities are now being sent into the nerve-wracking world of mass catering. We probably are going to be doing a lot of covers today, and that's quite daunting. I'm very excited, just because I, I, I kind of like being in at the deep end. Good morning. You've obviously noticed there's three, not four of you. Poor Joe is unwell and he can't take part in this challenge. Welcome to Surrey Sports Park. This is the training ground of Harlequins Rugby Football Club. Today, you are going to be cooking lunch for 120 people. <laughs> OK. <laughs> what we want from you, three different main courses, 40 portions of each, and then 60 portions of two different types of dessert. Now, I've regularly watched these guys play. If I were you, I would not upset them. Off you go. Harlequins is globally renowned as one of the greatest international rugby clubs. They are 2012 Rugby Union Premiership champions and the squad includes both England and New Zealand international players. Today, in preparation for a Premiership match, they have a strict training schedule, broken only by an hour for lunch. The trio will be under the guidance of chef Susie McCourt. Today we're cooking for some very important guys, the Harlequins rugby team. There's loads and loads of ingredients here all stuff that there's available in their diet. The thing to remember with them, it's quality, but it's quantity. They eat an enormous amount of food. So have a look, see what menus you can come up with, and I'll catch up with you later. Um... Well... <laughs> Working together as a team, the celebrities now have two and a half hours to prepare three main courses and two puddings from a range of ingredients, including pork, lamb mince, chicken, and salmon as well as vegetables, fruit, larder ingredients, and spices. I think we should go with salmon, you know, as one of, as well, one of the dishes. Said, because we've got three main dishes, haven't we? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so we should do two meat and one fish, yeah. should, shouldn't we? Yeah, what about some what about chiritha with shirt? Yeah, that would be nice. Would that go with, nicely with the fish or not with, with salmon? No. It's daunting. This, it's, there's so many, it's like, how do you know what 120 plates of food look like? Chicken and pork pie, mm, or chicken pie. I don't know if, I don't know if I, how I feel about pastries and, do you know what I mean? I don't think I'll be able to put my eat. shirt on top. <coughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it's the first time I'll be cooking for, for anything more than eight. So 120 big um, rugby guys that are starving hungry. It's going to be a massive challenge. Maybe chicken and chorizo. Chicken yeah. and chorizo pie. Yeah. What about a bread and butter pudding? I think it's yeah. a good idea. There's everything here that, that kind of looks like it would make a trifle. I know absolutely nothing about rugby, but I know the big guys, so I know they're going to want to be fed well. What have you selected so far? 
We're doing chicken, beef and salmon. Can I just stop you there? That's actually lamb mince. That's lamb mince. Okay, okay. okay. Well, should we make a shepherd's pie then? Okay, yep. Shepherd's pie. Are you doing anything with the chicken or the pork? What are you doing? Chicken. Chicken. With a potato top, because they're not allowed pay. There's no pay. They're not allowed yeah, no pay. Potato potato top. Okay. Music to our ears. Can I just ask one, one, one question? Is there a team leader or a captain? No. no. But we'll... Speech should be our team leader. You're going to have to have a leader, guys, a team. Yeah. OK. Speech, I'll do you're it. being the strongest so far, you can... Yeah. OK, I'll do it. All right, um... Sorry, speech? OK, I'll do <laughs> it. It was, all right, I will do it. Yes. Yeah, excellent. Wow. You're going to have to get a move on, guys, otherwise you're going to run out of time. Chicken. They seem to have got an idea of what they want to do, but I'm feeling a bit apprehensive. The most important thing for me is I do this on a daily basis. I want these guys to get fed, so... But fingers crossed we'll be OK. Speech, tell me what's the plan? We're doing so, you tell chorizo me... and chicken stir-fry. Also have salmon with, like, a cream sauce. And then there is the... Uh, lamb shepherd's pie. The desserts are pineapple, banana, uh, trifle, um, and bread and butter pudding. I think it sounds brilliant. Mm -hmm. I don't know okay. how much these boys are going to like salmon and cream. Okay. When was the last time you ate fish and cream together that wasn't in a fish pie? I don't really remember, to be honest. I don't remember. Thank you. Speech's first job is to get the meat prepped and in the oven. It's the policy to steam it as a healthy alternative to frying. Cheese! My job at the moment is to prepare all the veg. So we can't make anything without everything being chopped, peeled and washed and getting ready. And at the moment, that's my job. Chef, got carrots for you. Oh, thank you very much. Across the kitchen, Les gets going with the trifle. Yeah, it is a lot to do. <laughs> I'm not as worried about the bread and butter pudding because um, it doesn't take as long to prepare. Right, this has to go into the freezer to set. I think the dishes are actually really good. A chicken and chorizo with rice. We've also got a really wonderful cottage pie. I'm really happy with the menu. I'm just not sure they're going to get it all out if they leave most of the bulk of the prep to Matthew and they give Les just the desserts. I hope that Les can get his head around how much prep he's got to do before he starts to assemble those desserts. I don't think Les has actually got an easy task at all. While Matthew continues to prep the veg, Susie has spotted a problem with the meat. Speech, there's not enough meat in the oven cooking. Really? You've probably got 20 portions of chicken and 20 portions of mince. All the, all the rest of the meat's in the fridge. You need to put more on. There's okay. definitely not enough, let me okay. show you. You haven't got all the meat on? I thought that was it. I didn't know there was more. OK, so we need both of these. Wow. OK. OK. And? Your own body weight in diced chicken. I'll carry that for you. Go on. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> With an hour already gone, Speech calls Matthew in to help. You want all this in? Um, yeah, all in a steamer, but it, can't, it has okay. to go one. It can't be too thicker than that, really. Yeah. I couldn't even tell when I was looking at how much I did that it wouldn't, it wouldn't be enough. I couldn't, I couldn't see that. There's a lot to do, but I think we're going to do it. I'm confident. Over on desserts, Les is cracking on with the trifle. We have set jelly. And the fruit next. We have the start of a trifle. Yeah. But he's hit a problem with his custard. I'm trying to save my custard. It's kind of got a bit cloggy, um, so I'm having to add it in little dribs and drabs. I need it for both of my dishes. All right, guys, 
We've got just over an hour now to go before service. Has anyone thought about putting the potatoes on yet for your shepherd's pie? I'm just about to do that. You've got to get those potatoes on to cook, or they're not going to be ready, huh? Need the potatoes on! Don't make plastic bags like they used to. What you're going to have I to think... do, I think, is the pie mixture, yeah. no time, steam them, yeah. and then we're going to have to slice, slice them up and put them on top up. of the top, yeah? Okay. Uh, so you'll need some melted butter to go on top. Okay. Worried, because I just can't see it coming together. They seem to have got their own little jobs, but they're not communicating what's ready, what isn't ready. John is also concerned. Speech. Can you tell me, please, where the the uh, shepherd's pie filling is, please? At the moment, it's some lamb in a pot. Could you do me a favour and lay everything that you need for that shepherd's pie out on that bench? Yeah. Bring everything for your chicken over there? Yeah. And all your stuff for your stir fry here so it's ready to go? Okay. Okay, get yourselves organised and then we can go, yeah? There's going to be a time where they're going to have to come together and work really hard to make sure those dishes are complete. My concern is they're going to get the call, there's ten minutes to go, and they're not going to have it ready to go out. Les, meanwhile, has finally started the bread and butter pudding. Bread and butter pudding, 60 portions for sportsmen. Right, we're talking about a lot of loaves of bread, a lot of buttering, and lots of custard. What the heck are you decky is that? That is Les's bread and butter pudding. Something wrong with it, John. With time running out, John decides to step in. I'm going to start these bread and butter puddings because I'm not going to let this happen. And I want you to finish the trifles off for me, okay? okay? Yeah. We've promised the Harlequins dessert. Can you imagine that food to be served to these guys? No way. How bad was the first bread and butter pudding? Oh, no. So I'm doing a quick version, which is not actually every bit buttered, lots of fruit, and then it will just go in the oven for about 20 minutes. Feeling a little bit disappointed about my bread and butter pudding debacle, but the trifle, I think, is OK. With lunch fast approaching, the Harlequin's morning training is nearly over. You can't be a professional athlete without having the right fuel in your body. It's very important they get fed the right stuff at the right time so that we can manage their training day. We've had two hours of training, we need to eat, we need to be back out again within a certain period. So there's a tight window and there's going to be a lot of people that need to be fed very quickly with the right stuff. Back in the kitchen, things aren't going to plan. I need that out of there, because it's going to be your mixing bowl. OK, sorry. Watch out for the floor, guys, please. OK. Whoa! I'm hobble, bubble, toil and trouble, cauldrons burn, and making a magic spell. In the kitchen sink, we've sanitised it, we've cleaned it. I've been a judge on Marsha for a long, long time, but I've never seen a kitchen in such disarray. There's only three of them in here. They're a man down, and it shows. Can't see lunch being on time. While the players begin queuing up outside, the salmon isn't even in the oven. We have about 13 minutes. Susie, the chef, looks very stressed indeed. There's, there's 
one more trailer. We can get other trailer. There's five minutes till lunch, and Speech finally gets the salmon in to cook. So that's 15 minutes, minimum. I am really getting worried now. But at the end of the day, it's, I do this every day for them, and I've never let them down yet, so I really don't want it to happen today. You need trays to put your chicken in, so then go outside, yeah? Can you take this one out? Rice is out. Yeah, noodles, noodles are out. Chickens, Chickens are out. out. With 120 people waiting, Speech decides the salmon is ready. Okay. It's cooked. That's how I want it. Salmon's going out. Mate, it looks all right. Look at that. Whoa, don't drop it. I didn't. Not now. Can you shut the door behind me? Thank you. All right, boys. I hope you're not hungry. I wanted to do burgers, but she won't let me. <laughs> Ten minutes after service was due to start, all the dishes are out. Chicken and chorizo stew with rice, shepherd's pie, and Asian salmon served with noodles and steamed vegetables. See, that's raw, that's raw. Not cooked. It's not cooked. Take it back. It's not cooked. Do you know what? Let me take that. In the steam, I will take two minutes. It's about four minutes, is that all right? If you don't want salmon, you can come and help yourselves. You can come back. This is chicken and chorizo stew, turmeric rice. Okay. We've got shepherd's pie. Training out. Just two dishes are out and the Harlequins are helping themselves to generous portions. Chicken's going down very well. Chicken was really good, had a proper kick to it, and the rice went really well with it. It was very nice. Here is a chicken and chorizo tomato stew with, with, with rice. Most of this work, in fact nearly all the work, was, was speech. The brown rice, flavoured with turmeric and steam, is really tasty with that spicy chorizo, the tomato and the chicken. It is a little bit over-seasoned, but actually not bad. My only complaint is the size of the lumps of chorizo. The shepherd's pie is also in heavy demand, and the salmon is still not out. Go, I'll go, I'll look at the salmon. Can I take this? You can. The shepherd's pie was good. Um, it was a bit different with the uh, potato not being mashed on the top, but yeah, I liked it. The portion sizes were really good. Uh, I think for us, like, that's like, the, main, the most important thing, really. For the main, I had the shepherd's pie, and it was it was okay. Uh, the meat was a bit dry, um, seasoning was okay, a good effort. This shepherd's pie really is down to Matthew. I actually think it's quite tasty. It's a bit dry. That's the issue. You could do with some gravy. I'd have preferred mashed potato on it, but they were drastically running out of time. He put the sliced potatoes on. But it's good, and I'd definitely eat it. The salmon is finally served. There's a lot of portions going on. There's, like, four portions, one person happening. But I can see why uh, they're big guys.
Yeah, salmon, that was definitely my favourite dish. Got those real Asian flavours, so uh, it's real tasty. Salmon was beautiful, uh, rich flavours, a bit of a kick, which was good. The salmon was succulent, it was light, it was really nice. Have you got any more salmon? Uh, the salmon's all finished. All finished? Yeah. That's a hot favourite then. There is a really nice, sweet, but salty sauce across the top. I also quite like the steamed vegetables. A very healthy option. Steamed fish, noodles, no butter, a little bit of soy sauce and some peppers and leeks. Not bad. With the main course finished, Les brings out his banana and pineapple trifle. The other dessert is John's bread and butter pudding. Want a bit of both? I had the trifle, um, it was very nice, um, a colourful, um, nice fruit in there. It's quite nice and fresh, the cream is very nice as well. The trifle was um, wholesome, to be honest. Yeah, altogether, not a bad dish. Right, dessert time. Well, look at that. You know, it's, it's all right. It's got the taste of, of trifle. It's got cream, it's got custard, it's got jelly, it's got fruit. It just looks an absolute fright. I normally don't get pudding, so it's, it's nice to get pudding. Um, I prefer chocolate, but yeah, if, if we could get bread and butter pudding more often, it'd be nice. The presentation wasn't great, but luckily we're rugby players, so we're not that particular. I mean, as long as it's decent and uh, it tastes nice, we're pretty happy. The bread and butter pudding wins it for me. Uh, I've got a clean plate, so I think that says everything. I, I can't remember who made this, but they've obviously passed their finest hour. <laughs> I call that my 10-minute bread and butter pudding for 60. I couldn't believe the bread and butter pudding that Les was going to attempt to serve. There was no way in the world I could let that dessert go out. Actually, there's nothing wrong with that. Crispy top, buttery inside, the raisins give it an almost rum flavour and it's perfectly sweet. Thanks very much. Yes. Let's have a group hug. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Well done. Well done. Guys, we got there in the end, but it was traumatic. Close to the wire, really close. At least they got fed. The speech started off really well. She took the initiative to start with, but I think it went downhill as time went on. It was so much more difficult than I thought it was going to be. Not having Joe here, I think we felt that. I think there was that little bit extra work to do, but I'm happy with what we've done. Matthew concentrated on chopping his vegetables till the 11th hour and then actually rushed in and helped when it was needed. I love today. There was a lot of work to be done and thankfully we, we got something out that was edible. Les worked really hard and he tried his very best. He did actually produce an edible trifle, but he thought he knew how to make a bread and butter pudding. I was uh, disappointed that the bread and butter pudding <laughs> didn't even make the oven and a little disappointed that John had to step in and, and help. But we did it. We, did, we, we put food out to 120 people and they ate it, which is great. All in all, really, a pretty extraordinary day.
They had to make an enormous volume of food in there today. They were a man down, but actually they had good ideas and they did manage to get tasty dishes out. I'm really proud of them. Tough test and we are hurting towards a stage where we lose one of these guys. It's all to play for. Tomorrow, the pressure intensifies as the four celebrities battle to stay in the competition. Come on, one minute. Yeah, right, it's a bit of a disaster, yeah? He's just getting on top of me, you know, doing all this stuff. The atmosphere's gone frantic. They've been on a little while now, customers are waiting. Now, it's time for a team challenge. It is indeed a battle of the cheesecakes. Cowabunga.